So I made a big promise at the top of the show that we're going to convene a panel together so that we could all sort through what's going on with Jonah Hill, come to some sort of a conclusion. So we have gathered here with us today. We've got Emily Jashinsky, great friend and, of course, um, co-host of Counterpoints and Federalist and does all sorts of other things, busiest uh, working woman in show business. Yes. And we also have Kyle Kalinske, host of Secular Talk and my husband, Full Disclosure, which I guess is relevant to <laughs> yes. this conversation. It certainly is. To sort through the various issues. So, first of all, we do have an update, and I'm not asking anyone to defend um, this alleged action on the part of Jonah Hill, but apparently... Former child star Alexa Nicholas of Zoe 101 says that Jonah Hill, quote, shoved his tongue down her throat against her will when she was 16. Mm. So we have some additional character questions about Jonah Hill. But the thing that he everybody... He was 24. Yes. Yeah, he, was 20. he was 24. They were at a party at Justin Long's house. Who was it? I don't know. Time. I don't even you know were, who any yeah, of these people are. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know who any of these people are. But okay. the piece that people are really debating, let's go ahead and put this up on the screen, is Jonah was in a relationship with this woman, Sarah Brady, who um, is a surfer, that's basically all I know, really know about her, and she posted online these text messages that he had sent her. He said, quote, plain and simple, if you need surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendships with women who are in <laughs> unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful. I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it and there will be no hard feelings. These are my boundaries for romantic partnership, my boundaries with you based on the way these actions have hurt our trust. The last piece of information I will put up here, let's go ahead and put this next piece up on the screen, is some of the photos that apparently He had her take down. Again, she's a surfer. There's one where she's in a full-piece bathing suit. It's actually relatively modest, in my opinion. (laughs) But anyway, she's got, um, you know, her back to the camera, so you can see a little bit of her booty. Um, It's from, like, 100 yards away. I know. (laughs) I'm just trying to be fair to both points of view, all right? Um, And uh, also, apparently, in this one, he, like, accused her of being in a thong, but it's literally, like, a pretty modest one. (laughs) Anyway, so that is the setup here. Emily, let me go ahead and get your your take on all of this. Okay, so timing is also interesting context here. Jonah Hill just had his first baby a, a month ago. Right. Okay. She posts these from a relationship that's more than a year old out of absolutely nowhere. Mm. And after he has the baby, actually even invokes his baby in one of the Instagram posts and says, I hope my ex has a girl yes. because of X, Y, and Z for, so that he understands this stuff. Okay. Um, and I, I still also think one of the funnier parts of the discourse on this is that Jonah Hill slides into her DMs after apparently seeing one of these pictures. That's how their relationship started. Oh. Turns around then and says, no, these are my boundaries. Mm. And a lot of people I've seen in the discourse are like, well, that's so hypocritical. Au contraire. Mm. <laughs> this okay. is a man who knows okay. exactly what he should be doing ah. if he's falling in love with someone. He does say they were in love. Okay. So you meet, you realize, actually, all of the other men in the world are looking at these things that <laughs> made me attracted to you in the first place. This right. is my big contrarian take here. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is a boundary for me because I don't want other men sliding into your DMs because I'm a man and I know mm. that's what men are going to do. He is being pretty respectful in those messages. There are a lot of things we might not know about the relationship that he alludes to, reasons Mm -hmm. that they've lost trust, et cetera, et cetera. So while I think it's it's weird behavior, I definitely don't think it's, quote, emotional abuse, Mm. which is what she said. That seems to be a line too far. Kyle. Well, let's be clear. Nothing here is illegal, Mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody's claiming it's illegal. Uh, And I think it's a fair criticism to say... She continued to post private correspondence, and she's still doing it, like, right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen everybody kind of be like, oh, all right, you know, reel it in now. Like, (laughs) you've gone a little too far. I don't think I want to be in a relationship with either one of these individuals. Right, so that gets to my point. (laughs) This is good news, I'll I'll get to that. So so that gets to my point. It's like, I try, when I saw this, I tried to put myself in his shoes and put Mm -hmm. myself in her shoes, right? And from both perspectives, this was doomed to failure. Mm -hmm. Because to have a relationship that's functional, in my opinion, you need three things. Attraction, trust, and love, and the love can develop over time. But the second you click send on a message like that, the attraction's gone. Literally nobody on the planet is gonna wanna sleep with you if you're posting that long diatribe (laughs) about like, here are my rules for you. That's not how it works. And then obviously, from his perspective, he has no trust of her. So why are you even in a relationship with her? So if I was her friend, I'd be like, get out right now, don't even, don't hang on one more day. And if I was his friend, he was showing me, hey, this is the message I'm gonna send to my girlfriend, I'd be like, 
get out. Don't even bother sending the message because their, their values just don't align. That's just not a good fit. Yeah, I think that this woman who's posting these messages is definitely an attention-seeking narcissist. <laughs> and what you said was very key is like, bringing the daughter into this was a big mistake when she was like, I hope his baby, or what, what he remains feminist or whatever. <laughs> now, okay, that said, I have also been increasingly annoyed by the entire rise of therapy culture. And I will say, I don't know, okay, but emotional abuse. Yeah. These terms all get thrown around. And unfortunately, Hill himself is the one who's been endorsing a lot of this. Yeah. He recently recently did that whole documentary with his therapist. I think a lot of, he actually got a lot of praise for it. Um, but this actually is the end state of a lot of therapy culture. And I noticed this a lot in our current like uh, relationship, like how it's portrayed, a big fan of the show, Love Island. Uh, and what I see constantly <laughs> is they're like, this is just who I am. They're like, this is me. And it's like, you're, but you're acting like a crazy person. Yeah. You're not supposed to just say and validate your own insanity by being like, I'm being true to myself. As you just said, you know, if you want to be in a successful relationship, and specifically a successful marriage, it's just all about communication. And 90% of it is a lot about compromise. Now, you shouldn't compromise your core values, but you also shouldn't get to that point if you're unable to, to do so. So yeah. with Can I go Hill, a step further? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> because I actually, yeah. look, I, I actually am of the belief that this whole thing, I'm going to list my boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm going to list my boundaries. No, if you're in a successful relationship, the boundaries are kind of intuitive. You know what they like and what they don't like. They know what you like and what you don't like, and you kind of respect that inherently. Mm. I feel like anytime you're at a point in a relationship where it's like, I shall list the things you can't do, and you <laughs> yeah, will, it's I like, agree. what are we doing here? What are we, children? Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing too, but so listen, um, the therapy language to me comes out also in his post of yes. like, these are my yes, boundaries yeah, yes, and yes. blah, 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 as if it's reasonable for you to impose whatever boundaries mm are like 100% make you feel in control of this relationship. It sort of reminds me of, um, because you know I'm a weird wonk, you know, economic obsession, whatever. It's Where is this going? Yeah. It reminds wow. me of like contract law and like employment. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's a good point. But yeah. because no, you're right, you're right. You're allowed yeah. to freely contract, yeah. like a worker can, you know, I'm gonna offer my services and this is the wage and whatever. But there are also boundaries established in the law about what a reasonable contract looks like. You can't pay below a minimum mm -hmm. wage. Here's what the hours are. Here's when you have to pay overtime. And you are not, you cannot just like agree to be an indentured servant. So if you are putting out, these are my boundaries, you have to ask yourself, is it reasonable to tell this woman who is a surfer, she can't like basically be seen in a bathing suit. What is she supposed to like wear a burqa everywhere now <laughs> so other dudes don't think she's hot? Um, and she's not allowed to have friendships with women who are in unstable places beyond getting coffee or something see, respectful. I want to know more way, about that. See, yeah, see this one. this yeah. one to me was like the most over the line of like, now you're telling her who she can and can't ha be friends with other women that she has been friends with. Like now you're saying you can only get coffee with these people. That seems crazy. I would, I would really like to know more about that. I mean, actually I wouldn't want to know any more. Like, I don't need to know any more about the situation, but since we're here, I would like to know more about that because it seems like he's alluding to her very, what her very, what does he say? Her very recent past, her wild, wild recent, recent past. past. Yeah. Band what band. But then but, why are you yeah, with her? Yeah, like if yeah. you have a problem with her recent past, get out. And if you have a problem with people if, if being in a relationship with somebody in bathing suits, then it's a weird thing to start a relationship with a surfer. That right. said, if they, let's just give him benefit of the doubt for the sake of the argument, they fall in love. He's like, mm -hmm. I really love this girl. He does use the word love in some of these messages and they're going forward. She's like, yes, I will, you know, I, I realized my wild recent past was indeed wild and you know, I want to change, et cetera, et cetera. And there were people, for instance, who were coercing her to a drinking problem or a drug problem and that's what he's talking about. Then I can kind of see where she's trying to use a relationship to, as a stepping stone to a healthier life, not a great idea probably. But no, at not. the same time, you can see the, the sort of logic behind it. So this could either be something really minor, like girls who gossip that she hangs out with, that's the wild recent past, mm -hmm. or it's like they're coercing, coercing her into a drinking problem and yeah. making it worse. Look, something well, like look that. do we have the response actually? Because I think his response is very illuminating. Screenshotting intimate text between us is a huge triggering violation for me. Breach of trust as a friend. I've explained to you about breaches of trust I've had between trusted friends recently that have caused me trauma. I am increasingly <laughs> incredibly hurt and feel a lack of safety where I've always trusted you. I'm sorry if a former partner moving on is painful. I empathize with that, but I have done nothing wrong. And if I wasn't a public person, I wouldn't face this violation. Having shared that with you and then watching you be like this today shatters my ability to trust anybody even further. I have always shown you kindness and support. So 
Once again, we see uh, the return of the therapy language, the but trauma, that's bad the one, hurt. I no, I'm but then, saying I am unable to trust anybody further. You know, another key part of this is that being famous is not all that's crocked up. Because I, clearly this dude uh, isn't is she, screwed up now. She, she, she didn't help suit? her case. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she didn't help her case by continuing to post all these. Uh, these no, I, that's why I said. What I mean? I, she clearly is an attention seeking. She's also obviously hurt by the relationship that he moved on and they had a child. I, I, you know, I guess we can all empathize with that, but you shouldn't be going starting something. He has a point that, you know, he wouldn't be facing any of this if he wasn't famous, but also part of the reason why I Think he's had to develop this insane complex around how to communicate with women is because he is famous. If, oh, well, yeah. he's also insecure because yeah. he played the role of like the fat loser. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just I like Screech from Saved by the Bell. I, yeah, and he's talked about that. His, about, yeah, go I was gonna, well, yeah. I was going to say his insecurity is clearly like a driving point of this. Mm. But I would also say if she, if this, if the roles were reversed, and let's say again, like the most charitable case for his text messages, a woman is saying this to a man who's been struggling with a drinking problem or a drug problem or cheating, something like that. These text messages leak. I think it would be a really different response. I think there's something particularly triggering in the public discourse about a man listing rules for women that sounds it hits us in the wrong way. I do think relationships need to have boundaries, but to your guys's point, those should be sort of implied. You should yeah, yeah. enumerate them in text messages like a constitution. And when I think when I think of a best friend or when I think of a romantic partner, you you're on their team and they're on your team. Like, loyalty actually matters. Of course, if you get to the very extreme stuff, like, hey, I committed murder. It's like, hey, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, like, outside of the there. very few exceptions, it's like, the whole point is I'm on your team, you're on my team for a best friend, for a significant other. And, like, this dynamic is the polar opposite of that. Like, mm -hmm. nobody looks at, here's a list of rules for you and goes, like, can't wait to hang out with them next time. Like, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, you shared with you, somebody had tweeted out, like, you know, I hope you understand my boundaries. Now get back in your cage. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is what it feels like. Like you know, I I want okay. So two questions I have for the group. Number one, um, on the question of her leaking these messages, so putting the content of the message aside, do you think it was at all okay? I guess given the content of the message, like was it okay for her to share this with the world or no? No. Uh, should Absolutely. have come at the time of the breakup if he actually cared. I mean, I th it's clearly like emotionally manipulative in order to try and hurt his recent, you know, uh, chance. Uh, his recent chance, I think, at a relationship and at having a baby. And that, and that, I do think it is really, you know, upsetting and bad. And I, I understand also where he is coming from. But I think, I mean, uh, and, and at the end of the day, I don't condone or think people should be releasing this kind of stuff. But if it were to be like in any realm of acceptability, it would have to come at the time of the breakup and have to be the reason of like, this is why I left and, you know, Especially, she's like, he hurt me, and this is something that I want to exact. But right now, it just really looks like the worst type of bitterness and revenge. So I yeah. largely agree yeah, yeah. that it's like ethically sketchy. But having said that, that shouldn't prevent us from discussing the issue no. oh, yeah, as yeah, yeah, such. Yeah, yeah. There's no question. But I see a lot of people yeah, yeah. playing this like oh. little trick where it's oh. like, because I don't think they should have been leaked, therefore totally oh. off the table. Yeah. And it honestly reminds me of back in the day when like Edward Snowden released that the government yeah. was spying on all of us oh. and the establishment was like, you're not allowed to talk about that, pretend you don't even know that. And it's like, <laughs> no, we're gonna talk about the issue regardless of what you think, whether or not it should have been released. But I largely agree, it certainly is ethically sketchy. What I'll say this is, I'll, I'll say that the earlier messages, I think, were more defensible than the fact that she keeps freaking going mm -hmm. with stuff that's not improving her case at all. Now you look like a psycho as well because you, you are kind of a psycho. Well. Like, yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, another question. Okay, let's say, because part of the context here is she's a surfer. Mm. So that makes it more unreasonable to be like, you can't post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit. Mm. And we saw the pictures that he wanted taken down, which were really pretty modest. They weren't like thirst traps. Because, yeah. you know, I would be a little more sympathetic if it was like, you know, she was posting these really overtly sexual mm. pictures. Yeah. I would be more sympathetic to that. But when you see the actual photos and you're like, you're literally just surfing in a one piece bathing suit. <laughs> Um, I became, you know, significantly less sympathetic to his position. But let's say, and I think you brought this up, Kyle, maybe in the video you did. Let's say that you uh, decide to date an actual Instagram model whose, like, whole thing is to post mm -hmm. thirst traps all day long. Is it unreasonable to ask that person to, yes. like, change themselves? Like, it if is. they're a model, they're an Instagram model, you know that going in, and then you're like, I don't want you posting thirst traps. What do you guys think? 
So maybe I, we disagree on I'm, that. I'm, but I'm if you're dating honest. an Instagram model, that's the whole point. Is that's like right. you that's want the woman who posts the thirst trap. I, so, I agree yeah. on that. I agree. I agree. I it's like it a weird thing to do. I, well, yeah. I agree on that yeah. too. But, but then you can't control you, them after. Again, if you fall in love and mm. you realize you have a change of heart, you want to like change your lifestyle nope. because it would be weird. That's for on you, dog. To, well, it, 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 it is on you. I agree with that. Um, but at the same time, I can understand where. In Jonah Hill's defense, the way he wrote those messages wasn't like, I'm gonna, you know, like right. tear up your stuff right. and like destroy your reputation. It was just, hey, if you wanna do that, that's fine. It's not for me, I'm yeah. out. I think that's a, a reasonable thing if you, and I don't think Jonah Hill was like converting to like some f conservative faith, <laughs> but if that happened in the realm of it depends, you get into a relationship with someone, you realize that you have a different sexual ethics or that this sexual ethics has been hurtful to you, something like that. Get out. And you ask. Just get out. And the other person says no, fine. If you, but I don't think the ask is crazy in and of itself. I think the ask is one of those things that will expose the incompatibility. I, I disagree. And then you walk away. Listen, that, that is the weaponization of the therapy speak that we were just talking about. This idea that like you can hide behind this veil of high-minded, serious therapy stuff to be like, and I need you to change this very core thing about who you are. Mm. So I think, look, you know what you're signing, everybody knows what they're signing up for. Yeah, and he knew what he signed up for here. And so for them, for him to turn around and be like, no, I don't uh, approve of any of this, it's like, nobody cares if you approve of any of it. She's <laughs> gonna do what she's gonna do. And where does it end to? Because clearly part, like a core part of what he objects to is just her being in any position where other men could find her yeah, hot. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and that's and just like, from his insecurity. Where, that's all right, that is. Where does right. that end? Does like she's not allowed to go out in public. Where's your burka? In, that's like, where it ends. Exactly, <laughs> like she can't, yeah. now she can't wear a bathing suit. She's gotta wear a burkini or she's gotta, you know, she's gotta like have floor length skirts. I, it just, it gets to a level of where this is not about her. She's not doing anything wrong. You got issues that you need to work through. You need to maybe spend some more time with your therapist because you decided to date a woman who is beautiful and other people are gonna find beautiful and you're gonna need to find some way to like manage that and cope with that. Otherwise you're gonna have some major issues. She shouldn't have deleted anything. I think that was like a slippery slope. She obviously was trying to like- Oh, she deleted some of the messages she posted? No, she deleted some of the pictures. Oh, oh, oh right, right, and, like, yeah, no, no, you're right. Because like yeah. these, these people are fundamentally it incompatible. Just ended. It should have just ended. Their, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like their ideas about what's appropriate and what like it is just fundamentally incompatible. To the previous question, this is what I brought up when we were talking about was Penn Badgley, I believe that's how you say it. Oh, Gossip uh, Girl. From uh, but Gossip Girl, but also recently at You, yes. actually said he is swearing off racy sex scenes that previously were a staple of the show out of respect for his new wife. And I was like, that is actually kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. It gets to, you know, in a way, like his wife got into, she knew what he was whenever she married him, obviously. Uh, that said, though, it seems to be out of discussions between him and his partner, like he felt like it was disrespectful to her. He no longer wanted to do it. But actually, it did Evolution. cause- yeah, it, yeah, but it did cause some consternation on the show because they're like, well, hey, that's like a core part of the contract that you signed yeah. about the character. We don't know the background playing. of that. His wife could have been like, yeah. you're doing this or I'm leaving. You know it's what I mean? It's possible. I don't know. I just don't uh, like the, if you know what you signed up for, I don't like the, well, now you got to change it. You know, it's like if Crystal came to be like, you can't play it. golf anymore. It's like, I've been playing <laughs> golf my whole life and now we're married. It doesn't mean I, like, what are you Do talking you have about? sexy golf pants? We can't have I know. That. Yeah. Actually, pleated, it's pleated weird. pants. Let's go. Crystal told me before she started, or before we started, that she was like, I think I'm gonna come out in favor of right to work. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> smart. That's right. Smart. Um, the, one of the final points I wanted to make is about introspection, because I think the thing that drives me crazy about all this stuff is the lack of introspection all around. Because even minimal introspection, you would have realized like, I'm being a little crazy here on her side for continuing to post all of this stuff over and over and try to be the number one story in the country. <laughs> and on his side for like being so demanding and having this list of boundaries that he's enforcing after the fact when you already knew these things about her. People need to, like, it goes back to the weaponization, weaponization of therapy thing. If you stop and look inward and think, like, just objectively, how would a, a reasonable person view what I'm doing? I think it would have nipped a lot of this in the bud, and they would have realized very quickly, like, if I'm doing minimal introspection here, I shouldn't be with her, she shouldn't be with me, this just isn't gonna work, it's a toxic relationship. If anything, the trajectory is going in a worse direction, it will keep on going in a bad direction. Yeah. So I think that could have prevented all of it, but unfortunately, I actually do think that this, you know, modern age obsession with therapy type stuff, it actually gives people a very powerful tool 
to not do introspection. No, this is narcissism. Well, right, that's what I'm saying. Play. Narcissism I mean, that's masquerading the, yeah. as like intellectualism, basically, through therapy. Yeah, I was gonna say on that last point, and this is actually a fairly serious one, I think therapy culture has allowed people to inflate definitions of things like emotional mm. abuse to Drama. a point where it is actually very dangerous because it cheapens the experiences people have with real emotional abuse, and it allows everyone else to put themselves in this sort of like, uh, that you sort of step into the role of a victim when she had plenty of agency in this situation. She wasn't being coerced or controlled. She could have done anything that she wanted to do, and it's weird behavior on Jonah Hill's part, but she is a free woman who is able to do what she needs. She's uh, exercising her freedom right now, and uh, the, to say that that is uh, emotional abuse, I think is is really allowing people to lump themselves in in uh, an unfortunate way with people who are suffering very, very severe, actual, like, legal, um, serious emotional abuse, and that really is an unfortunate trend, I think, for the country. Well said. Yeah, I agree with that. I would just say my final point is just don't send the message in the first place just leave and to her when she received that message the second she received it just leave so yeah. i see a lot it's of blame to go all around yeah. but i do think his at least prior to her continuing to post all the messages prior to that i thought his behavior was way weirder because in those initial uh, backs and forths it looks it looked like she was being kind of like mm -hmm. trying to appease him and trying to be reasonable and so that's why i think everybody sort of jumped to her defense initially because it did seem like very very controlling behavior yeah there you go. i i do feel like i should stand up at least for like therapy can be good for people oh yeah sure I'm not yes. saying like <laughs> therapy is terrible and everybody should go to therapy <laughs> have you ever tried golf i, I just think there's, I just think there's <laughs> that's why a line golf. between have you tried alcoholism you know it, it can be good to like you know self-reflect and work on your lives they're all good things but then you have to consider the line between working on yourself and then just like obsessive narcissism, <laughs> especially when it comes into contact with your romantic partner. Yeah, okay. That's where I will leave things. All right. This is a great discussion. We had a lot of fun. Good way to uh, end <laughs> the Dr. show. Dr. Phil. Uh, we'll see you guys later. <laughs> hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.